Hey, what's up, Parasites? Welcome back to the episode of the Venom Vlog. And today, I couldn't talk about the series by myself. I thought about it. I even recorded a version of it, and I ended up deleting it last night because I knew our friend Randy here would jump on and discuss this with us, which is the Death of Venomverse, issues one through five. And we're only going to talk about the main story, the Kid Venom, and No Escape. I did record videos for those, so those will go up at a separate time, and we'll di dissect those separately. But here, I want to sink my teeth in this story, and I know Randy has a great perspective on it as well. So, Randy, introduce yourself, tell everyone who you are, if they haven't already seen you on the show before, and uh, let us hear your excitement or non-excitement for discussing <laughs> Death of Venomverse. <laughs> uh, well, this is our third or fourth time doing a, a, a podcast together, so, um, you know, we've done this a couple times through the years, so... You know, uh, I'm Randy, uh, also known as Venom Balor or Venom Unleashed, um, Twitter, you know, uh, so, I mean, I'm friends with Eddie, you know, um, uh, Eddie's mullet, you know, I know everybody should know yeah, him. Shout out to Eddie's mullet, man. <laughs> We're going to all three get a, another episode at some point, uh, but it's just, you know, we all have personal things going on too. And, and uh, right now, actually, Randy and I are in very similar boats uh, with uh, animals. So this for us is very therapeutic and helping us escape. So for all of you guys who send well wishes to me, send some to Randy in the comments too. Uh, we're both going through something similar. So uh, thanks for, and thanks for making time to be here, brother. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. And, and, the, and I also want to start off by saying like, I genuinely and typically am a fan of stuff that Colin Bunn writes and me also, too. and also Gerardo Sandoval's artwork. I'm a fan of. Yes. Right. So, so this is, this was surprising and tough after I finished the series, how I thought of it. And, um, and so we're going to dive into that, but I just want to say like, obviously nothing here is personal. If we, if we go off on little tangents, we're just passionate Venom fans and we like discussing this stuff. So right. we don't mean any harm. We're just giving our opinions. So hopefully everybody understands that. Yeah. I absolutely love Colin Bunn and Sandoval. Uh, I'm huge fan. I've talked to, talked to them before um you know they're they're awesome uh so you know n n n no heat or shade <laughs> thrown at them you know so you know it, it's all good and amen they're very talented dudes and uh we started this show when we first started the venom vlog almost six years ago now uh the the venomverse series that colin bunn did uh and venomized though that trilogy and then the x-men crossover those were all coming out and those are among the first trade paperbacks that I reviewed on this channel. So this is kind of neat to, you know, kind of wrap up the Cullen Bunn. You know, who, who knows? He might write more stuff in the future. But um, but it, I have a very different opinion now <laughs> as I did <laughs> when I started because I love all the Venomized stuff. But uh, but this I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. a little, I'm, I'm a little negative on. So we're going to dive into it. Uh, first off, I do have digital codes for these comics. Not for the first issue, unfortunately. There was, wasn't was one in there. I tried to email and get one, but I never got a response or I didn't see a response. So um, I have issues two through four, uh, two through five. So when we get to those, uh, we're going to go issue by issue, discuss this, tell tell you our favorite parts, our least favorite parts, our constructive parts. Uh, Randy has some deep dive lore stuff that he's going to get into as well. So we're going to have some fun here. So hopefully you guys uh, stay tuned and throughout the episode, you'll get some digital codes uh, as we go forward. So Issue one, man, uh, Cullen Bunn, Gerardo Sandoval, great team. You know, I know Devin Lewis and uh, other people were uh, Kazam, I think uh, one of the other editors, like a really good team put together. It's just a lot of names we've seen before and talked about on this channel. So going into this, kind of like what were your, you know, expectations? Were you, you, you know, where did you think this story was going to be? How, how did you think you were going to receive it? And then what what's like a broad version of, uh, before we dive into details of issue one, what you thought of the story overall, just like as a broad stroke. Okay, go get, going into it before I read anything. I was yeah. really excited about it because of Venomverse and Venomize. Mm -hmm. You know, that very fond memories for me. So um, I was really excited about that and going into that. Um, I do have to say that, is, that the first issue, uh, oh, I, I've got a parrot as well. So that's okay. You might hear, you might hear and I'm talk. Animals are welcome here. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the first issue, I don't think is as bad as especially the fifth issue. Um, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyway, um, I, it was confusing. Um, 
like with with all of the different which you you said that you kind of d- done a deep dive of all the different venoms yeah um it's kind of confusing all the di- all the different venoms like like certain ones you know i'm i'm familiar with like ann for yeah. instance you know but like these some of these venoms you know that just come out of nowhere uh, you know really don't know much about them you know what i'm saying yeah so you know o- other than like the ones that were being introduced you know of course you, you're not going to know, know anything about those about them but you know um the first issue i don't think was as bad um you know and uh, honestly i think that If they had stayed the course from the first issue, mm. it, it probably would have been better. You know what I'm saying? I can, yeah, I can get behind that, and we'll and we'll dive into that when we get to the details. Because I, I I feel you're right. Like I, the first issue made me a little nervous, but I was still was like, well, it's a first issue. First issues are like TV shows or pilots; they're hard to write a lot of times. You got to set a lot of things up. You got to rush some things, cut some corners based on page count. So I was willing to forgive a little bit with the first issue because of that reason. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I went in the same way. I went into the series going, all right, I like Venomized. I like the previous stuff. I like Colin Bunn's Venom run with, uh, you know, with Flash. Like, this is going to be fun. I think this will just be mindless popcorn fun. And I'm I'm on board for that. And uh, boy, was I, I feel like I was very wrong <laughs> with that assumption. Um, but we'll, we'll, let's dive into issue one then and get into some of the details. So in this issue, they do they set up a lot. Um, you know, obviously they're building off of what was written by other writers because I, I factor that into where Cullen has to find his voice uh, on the building on the backs of other people's works. You know, so we have Carnage who's turning into a god. He's going into he, he absorbed the spots powers and Hydro Man's powers, and he's uh and now he's going around to different universes. He went to Asgard or, or uh, Niflheim or somewhere, and he was gathering. Uh, as guardian stuff and DNA. And now he's kind of building himself up. He's going to other symbiotes and absorbing their codexes and with it, their powers. And that's kind of where the story starts as he opens up with uh, Eddie Brock and Cletus Cassidy in jail, much like the, the origin of Cletus Cassidy turning into carnage, except, you know, it's, it was a trap laid by carnage. Who's going around to all the multiverse, killing every Eddie Brock he can find. Uh, or venom he can find. So, uh, so what did you think of that kind of curveball right at the beginning? Because that that kind of pulled me in. I was like, all right, I, I like this. So that was a good start, a good way to start. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that was good. That was a little bit of a blast from the past, you know. Yeah. Uh, back to you know issue three sixty one, three sixty. You know, um, one problem I do have with it mm-hmm. is how he comes in so easy and he's able to to kill Eddie. Oh yeah, so, so easily. Just, I mean, it's like instant. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a fan of that part. Um, that's going to be something I'm going to bring up th- th- through the issues. <laughs> sure. Um, there, there is certain things I'm going to point out, uh, but I did not like that at all. It was just, it was over in a heartbeat. I mean, that was supposed to be, you know, the original Venom, but you, you know, it was like an alternate universe, of course. But you know, but still, it shouldn't have been that easy, right? I mean, yeah, that's the thing is like p- people in this and Colin Bunn said that I think on Twitter, he was like, oh, he was like, oh, yeah, people are going to drop like flies. And I'm like, no, they literally drop like flies <laughs> like you to the point where like when when fl- flies are killed and dropped, you don't think of their personality. If they have families, you don't think of any background. And that's exactly how almost every character that goes against Carnage in the story is written. I don't care about their background. I don't care about their story. <laughs> They're just flies, you know, uh, yeah. hovering right at danger. And um and that's kind of how they deliver the story. So, yeah, when it starts off like that, though, I was like, okay, yeah, it was a little too easy, but I get it. They're they're trying to lay the groundwork that he's a threat. You know, it's this is not your normal carnage. He's amped up. If for people who didn't read the monthly series or didn't maybe didn't enjoy the monthly series or whatever, it's like here's what here's where carnage is at this point in time. And then while that's happening, they cut to Anne Weying, who is Agent Venom from Earth uh, ten fifty one. And she brings with her a team of people. She has a, a, a someone named Virus, you know, who looks like the virus that was in the main Marvel universe, uh, ten and fifty one. They're all everyone on Anne's team, um, and I didn't notice this till the second time I read it. But they're all from her Earth. 
Uh, you have Virus, Agent Spider-Man, Agent Deadpool, and Agent Hawkeye. And they're all just different symbiote characters and agents, I guess. That's how they operate on her world, which I guess it means she's not the same Anne from the Donny Cates run. Uh, because that Anne didn't have a Dylan, and or, or she did, she did, but he turned into Codex, I think. Um, but they didn't have other agents, as far as I know. So I don't think, and you could correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think she's the same Anne from the Donny Cates alternate universe. Okay. Um, the way I was reading it, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just gonna say how how what how I thought about it. Mm -hmm. You know, we could both be wrong. But I felt like that it actually was okay. But, but because if you think if you go back to like Venom twenty seven Kate's run, yeah, you know, she had she had all those the 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 agents with her Deadpool and Spider. Oh, she did. Yeah, that's right. She did. You're right. Yeah, she she had all of them with she she uh she even had um um oh god she had Andy. Andy, had, yeah, had, she had an Andy. Yeah, that's she right. Had, she had Andy as well. Right. Um, you know, so I, I, I believe that, that that is the oh. Anne Wang from that series. Okay. Um, then how so, do you explain so, Dylan? Okay. Now here's the thing. This is okay. what, I did, what I didn't like. Okay. Okay. So, you know, he, they did good with the continuity with right. the, the, the characters that they introduced in that series. But with Dylan, um, I was like, he is a kid here. Yeah. And in Kate's series, he was grown. Yeah, he was the king in black. He was Codex. Yeah. 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 He he was grown. Right. So I was like, okay, what the hell? Right. You know, they're out there got me right 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 away. I, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, that this isn't right. And you know, I even went back, like I said, I did my I done my deep dives. Right. I went back to Venom 27. And you know. And and all those agents are in that issue. Okay. Okay. So I do believe they are they are from that run. Okay. So the deal with Dylan, I don't understand. I don't okay. I don't understand that. Well, do you think they maybe could just be from a, a world that's almost exactly like that world, but uh, but then they the only difference is that Dylan's still a kid in in ten fifty one. Uh, possibly. Yeah possibly but it just kind of seems it just kind of seems like and from that alternate reality was the one that was coming through and taking charge like yeah it did seem like that was like within uh edge of death of Venomverse and all the the build up to this yeah uh, yeah she's going around recruiting people and yeah i kept thinking oh that's the same Anne because mm -hmm. that Anne doesn't have a dylan so she's she's taking a personal stake in this war against carnage by uh you know because that issue to venom 27 when they're with each other she admits she's like yeah dylan what you know turned into a codex or whatever and, and there is a fight and they had to take him down and then she spent a year with our eddie and dylan in that alternate universe until they found a way to get him back home right so, so to me i'm like okay well then why would she spend a year with two Dylans, <laughs> and, you know, if he, after they defeat him as Codex, if he went back to kid form and they didn't show that in the book, they just showed that he was gone. So I'm like, so again, like I, I struggled with the continuity there. And all I could think of is that maybe they originally wanted it to be that same, same Anne, but then at the last second they decided to change their mind or they, or, or they just didn't remember that the continuity, you know, that Dylan wasn't still with her. So who knows? Like, I guess, I guess it's, it's up for speculation. So if anyone in the comments wants to chime in on that, uh, let us know because soon after that, like soon after that confusion at the, at the story, we start seeing dead bodies. There's like a rocket raccoon venom that's dead. There's um, an X 23 venom venomized X 23 that gets killed. Uh, an ant man slash giant man that gets killed. So, you know, carnage is just going through and just wiping people out and it leads them into um you know obviously crossing paths with Anne and uh, and her team which is starts off small she you know and they start bringing in agent deadpool and stuff and then those guys get killed i mean literally everyone shows up just before their death it's like it's just it's it's carnage but at, like i said for the first issue i let it go because i'm like all right i get it you want to set up how deadly he is this is not your grandpa's carnage or whatever but it goes through 
people so fast and characters so fast that you don't get a chance to care. So when they die, you're just like, I don't care. Like, uh, you know, by the, especially by the time you're in to the fifth issue. So, but this book does end with a, a really cool splash page though, to complement the artwork where we get, uh, who do we get venomized at the, in the last page of the first issue? Oh God. It's a, it's a, it's a team. Uh, the, the symbi oh, oh, oh. yeah. Oh, um. The symbiote six. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, five of them because he already killed, I think, one of the members. Um, yeah, he killed Electro and took the Electro's powers. But yeah, yeah. So there was the symbiote six, which I was like, okay, that's goofy, but all right, that's a good way to end the first issue, I guess. I'm I'm intrigued. Uh, but okay. but boy, boy, did it not uh, that did not matter setting them up at all. Okay, so another thing that I didn't really like or agree with okay is how he was able to um attack electro and take his powers yeah you know what i'm saying yeah yeah i mean electricity uh you know i know he's amped up and all but i mean it just yeah. kind of you know the the logic's interesting in this because it feels like it doesn't really follow past symbiote logic or lore it just kind of goes okay carnage because Carnage absorbed Hydro Man stuff and Spot stuff and whatever he got from Niflheim and all this stuff, like he's and he's not he doesn't have a host. He's just liquid symbiote with us with the consciousness. So the rules seem to have changed with him. So I'm like, okay, I'll buy that a little bit. But yeah, they kind of rush through the well. Not they don't even try to explain it. They just I guess they figured the 12 issue Carnage book set it up enough to where now he can come in and when he tears your codex out, if you're bonded to like an electro and you have electro's powers or bonded to shriek and she has sonic powers or chaos engine who we're going to meet soon too like i guess he can the codex has entwined with their dna to where it has their abilities now too i just never knew symbiotes to do that but then again maybe yes a little bit because when the symbiote left peter to go to eddie it did pass on some spider-man type stuff to eddie so i'm like uh, I guess it kind of works if you if you really want to dig back into it, um, but it's just handled so fast that I it, it's jarring. So I get your you're kind of thrown. The, you're just kind of like, wait, what's what's hap Why is this happening yeah. so quickly? I was actually like, I was reading it and I was like, wait, whoa, Paul, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how's, just, how, how's how's this happening? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they don't they don't spend time discussing it. They just oh, this is how it is and. There, that is a technique in writing sometimes where they'll say, um, you know, when, when you're writing something, you'll have someone over you go, look, either the audience is going to get it or they're not. If you sit here and explain it with exposition, it's going to slow the story down. It's going to be boring. So just do it and just hope they get it. And this feels like one of those moments where Colin Bunn just said, all right, either people are going to understand this or they're, or they're not, or they're going to be on board with the idea or they're not. But as lore guys, I know we, we just want a little bit more to understand, you know, um, because I don't think the Carnage series did that good of a job explaining it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, as I was going through reading through the the, the comics, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I took notes and everything. And as it was new to me, I would take notes and ask questions, you know, questions that I want answers to later. Okay. So I wanted to know number one, who is who is virus? Like who is who's inside? Sure. You know, you know what I'm saying? Uh, look who was in the suit. Um, also, I, did, I have to say that Sandoval did an absolute badass job on Virus. He looks awesome. He does look awesome. Absolutely awesome. Um, uh, let's see. And also, um, I know that there is Cletus Cassidy Carnage. Yes. And then there's Carnage. Right. But it seems like there's more than just the one. You know what I'm saying? Like the one that they're fighting in this issue mm -hmm. does not does not look like the one that you see in the last issue. Oh, I see. So you're saying this this one looked different from the Carnage at the end of uh, Carnage, where yeah. he was where he was kind of had the horns and godlike looking. Right, exactly. And that's true, but but in between that issue and this issue, we had a edge of venomverse type miniseries and we had a one shot where um where carnage fought a a venom craven the hunter i think and uh 
in another universe. And in both of those instances, he was normal looking sometimes. And then the digital comics that Ch uh, Chapman uh, McCloud uh, Clay that he that Clay wrote, some of those had him with the horns and some of them didn't. So, so again, yeah, lack of consistency or, um, you know, it's Carnage trying to, you know, still trying to get a hold of that form. And it's not until he kills Null in this book that he can, that he perfected it, you know, that he can look like it for permanently. So again, I'm, w I'm winning a no prize if I got that right, because the book doesn't explain that at all. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's yeah, just, I'll, I'll, that was my I'll, logic to it. I was trying to figure that out. It's like, okay, he looked like this here, but yeah. then he looks like this here, Yeah, you know, and it kind of jumps back and forth. Like, you know, like, is there like multiple carnages? You know, I mean, it had me thinking. Yeah. And there's, and there's, um, there's, uh, there's, I think three total. I, as a, as far as I know, there's the God Carnage, there's the Cletus one who can warp the room around him, I guess, uh, or cause hallucinations, uh, down on Earth in in uh, Saint Estes, and then there's the one that's growing out of Deadpool. <laughs> so, so there's like there's a lot going on with Carnage, and they clearly have some kind of long form story plan that they want to do with him. But I'll be honest, after reading this, I'm like if this is the empire strikes back it's not <laughs> because it's not it's not <laughs> it's not that good um it's so so with with issue one wrapping up and showing the symbiote and if you have more of those i love those lore questions that stuff you were just asking so if you have more of those pop those um, in i've yeah. actually got i've got quite a few awesome so let me um, let, we'll move, move to issue two but if you still have some from issue one ask them but i just want to quickly plug that code right there that you guys see on screen there's the digital code for issue two. And even if we don't get into issue two right now, we're going to still discuss. I want to hear more of Randy's questions here. So, um, and if you have some in the comments, you know, leave your questions in there and we'll try to have a back and forth down in the comments. So boom, enjoy that code. First person to put that code in, you get issue two of death of venom verse. So yeah, go on, Randy. If you got something else before we dive in issue two, please hit um, me, man. I was just going to say that, um, that I, I absolutely love Anne being agent venom. I think it fits her so well. Um, yeah. and also, um, you know, the continuity other than Dylan, I, I thought was, was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, the one thing I wish they would have done Kate's as well. Yeah. Is since Deadpool has a symbiote, why not just call him venom pool? <laughs> yeah. There's like a Gwen pool venom that shows up later on and they don't really say her by name either, but I'm like, there was a couple instances where I'm like, just call them this, you know, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, because, I mean, that's, that's actually a, a legit character in the Marvel universe, Venom Pool. So, and, I mean, and that's, and that's, that's what I wonder sometimes with that is like, did they not do that? Because Venom Pool currently is in the, there's a Rob Liefeld Deadpool story out right now called Bigger, Badder, and whatever something. Um, and in that, Venom Pool has reemerged in that book. And so it's, and I think Carnage Pool maybe even too. So I think there's maybe because that character was being used, they said, okay, you can use a version of him, but don't call him Venom Pool because then that would, if he dies, that would mean we're killing the regular Venom Pool. But again, I'm not winning. If I'm getting any of that guess right, it's I, I shouldn't because nothing in the book explains that. You know, like it's just one of those things where, like you said, it's good to have these questions because you're like, why? like what, what, why? There's a lot of times where I was just like, why, when I was reading this. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, I had one more. Um, I was trying to figure out like um, when he takes the hell mark from uh, Andy. Yeah. Um, is he taking it from her through the codex or I, I mean, ha ha how's that happening? Because like when Venom gets gets the hell mark himself, yeah. it's, it's given to him from like what? Like Mephisto. Um, yeah. So so i mean like how <laughs> <laughs> well i'll say this like I, I don't know the answer to that i had a lot of questions because there was like i think a ghost rider venom shows up at some point too and and then when when carnage is using the hellfire and it's like burning symbiotes i'm like i don't think it works like that because if you go back to like the spirits of venom uh crossover like venom isn't burned by ghost riders here you know so so if it, and he has hellfire so i'm kind of like i I don't know why this doesn't something doesn't work here, but I also will say that that's the, probably the one thing I'm not going to challenge Cullen Bunn on because he's the guy who 
originally wrote Andy getting to Hellmark. <laughs> so, so I feel like he has some kind of internal logic of how that works and how it can transfer, but he just needs to like <laughs> say it, like how, how it works <laughs> in the book. It just, this, this book feels like one of those things where I'm just like, just say what's happening. Cause right. yeah, yeah. Cause, cause I feel like this is one of those things where, and maybe Sandoval is like this where, cause some artists do get like that. There's the Marvel formula, right? Where uh, I had a, a, you know, when I worked at top cow, um, Matt Hawkins would sometimes write books like this, depending on the artist, he'd be like, there'd be times where he wrote full scripts and the artist would follow what he wrote, like for think tank and stuff. Um, and then there would be artists he worked with who they have to do it. Yeah. They have to get that book out in a month. So he'll send them a quick outline of what's going to happen roughly on each page. They draw it. And then he goes back in and adds the dialogue. That's what this book felt like. It felt like one of those type of Marvel books where Sandoval probably laid out the artwork and drew a bunch of stuff and just drew battles. And then Cullen Bunn was like, okay, great. Well, now I got to make a story out of a bunch of battles, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so I don't know. I, I, and again, I'm just assuming there because that's how this book felt. It felt like something that wasn't written and then drawn. It felt like something that was drawn and then, you know, something you know, they try to build the story around the drawings, yeah. um, which is fine. I know that's how, you know, some great books are made that way, but, I don't feel like no, this, I mean, is, this is not one of them. <laughs> Marvel, you know, used to do that all the time. They called it the Marvel method. The Marvel, yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, they used to do that all the time, but they had that shit, you know, they had that down, like, perfect. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. Uh, that, this issue, though, no. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely not. Yeah, because issue two, I actually, out of, and you saw earlier, he lifted up some notes, everybody. So you saw Aunt Randy. I also wrote notes because I couldn't keep this shit together. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I was like, wait, who died in the first issue? And I had to go back and look at, look at my notes. I'm like, Agent Spider-Man, Agent Deadpool died. Agent Hawkeye got away, but I think he dies in this issue. But this one starts off with like, okay, it's Carnage versus Symbiote 6. So you're like, okay, well, they built this up in the first issue a little bit. So we're going to see an awesome fight. And the fight's over in like a couple pages. And Carnage, out of nowhere, because he has the Hellfire summons the monsters of evil and then just has them fight and help him kill. And I'm like, wait, what? Like, so he's not even fighting his own battle in this. He, he's just showing off the hell mark, I guess, to, so you could get a monsters of evil versus yeah. symbiote six fight. And so it just feels like a lot of decisions were made, you know, to like, Oh, this is cool. And this is cool. And this is cool. And it's like, all right, but how does one thing organically move to the next? And they're just like, shh, just, Look at look at the pretty pictures, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which I gotta say, Sandoval is a great artist. But some of these pages looked really rushed, like uh, like I couldn't tell what was happening on the page. I'm like, what is this? Like, and that's that's saying a lot because I like Sandoval's art style, and I think it's normally yeah. for a for a sketchy, intense art style, it's clean. I, I can see I know what's going on typically, but there were some pages in this book I didn't. So. Yeah, you got Carnage killed the Symbiote Six. Rhino lived though, which was cool. I like what they did with Rhino in this. And then they introduced Chaos Engine. Uh, so we'll stop. I'll stop there with my notes and kind of get your feedback because this is the halfway point of the issue. Like we get to see Shriek fighting a Carnage Spider Punk type dude named Chaos Engine. Yeah. Uh. Like. Uh. For, first, before we go on. Um, yeah. Deadpool didn't die. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, he uh shows up later on. You just like in Kate's run. You think think he's dead? No, he oh. comes back. Yeah, he didn't die. Um, okay. I mean, it makes sense for the character that he doesn't die, but yeah, okay. Yeah. But uh, anyway, um, chaos engine. Now, okay, he looks awesome. Yeah, he, yeah, he does look awesome. <laughs> he, he, he looks awesome. Yeah. Uh, but for me, I mean, I felt like. It was like a take on like Spider Punk, definitely. Um, you know, so I mean, shouldn't they have just like had like an alternate universe Spider Punk be that character? Because they don't they don't really tell you anything about Chaos Engine. Like, you don't know who's under there. You, you just it's just a symbiote, and they just throw them in there. Yeah, you see them without the symbiote on one time, but I couldn't make out who it was. Like I was like, I don't know who that is. I don't know if that's a Hobie Brown, you know, variant or or what. Um, so I couldn't tell. I honestly couldn't tell. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, it, cool looking character, great design. But like you said, they're just pulling really from Spider Punk, so it kind of feels like a rip off character a little bit. 
but I love the name Chaos Engine. Yeah. It's, like, it's such a yeah. cool name. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, he, and he looks great. Yeah, Seriously. looks. And yeah. he's and he's fighting Shriek, and they both have Sonic powers. And on this world, Shriek lost her Carnage because Chaos Engine killed that car. A uh, kill, and it looks like Absorb, you know, took in the symbiote. So he's like a Carnage Spider Punk. He's fighting Shriek, and then Carnage shows up to push her out of the way and kill or try to kill Chaos Engine until you know Anne and the team rescue him and get him out of there. You know, rescue them and get him out of there. And uh, and then he turns to Shriek and says, you know, you and Cletus on this earth got intimate together, which is something I guess he was inferring that him and his, uh, you know, Shriek never did. And he's like, you guys are intimately know, you know, know each other. So you're co you have a codex in you and you have sonic powers. So it turns out he didn't need Chaos Engine at all. He just killed her. Uh, and, took, and took her sonic powers so it just there was a lot of like con, uh, conveniences in the writing where things just fell into cletus's lap a lot of times um and everyone kept saying they have a plan but by this time we're in issue two now and ann weighing and her team have already failed two or three times yeah. um they do succeed in getting away with chaos engine in this issue but it doesn't last very long um you know, because Carnage is just, you know, already sets a trap up to meet them in the next issue. So it gets, um, it's just a lot of people going like, we have a plan. All right, here, we're going to do, we're going to do a Hail Mary. And then nothing ever works. Like every, and then we don't even know the plan. So it's not like, I, I always learned this in writing too, where if you, it's like Ocean's Eleven. If you go, all right, here's the plan and you break it down. Here's what we're going to do. And you spend, you know, a good amount of time. So the audience knows, okay, this is how the plan is supposed to go. So when it goes wrong, the audience is shitting their pants with you. You know, they're like, oh my God, that, that guy wasn't supposed to, he's supposed to do a backflip and land on that thing. He wasn't supposed to fall, you know, and, uh, and and this thing was supposed to, this device was supposed to go off at this time and it didn't. So it's supposed to, that's supposed to get the audience reacting. And then here is just everyone going, we have a plan. And then everyone attacks and then, uh, and then the plan, you know, then they die. And then you're like, oh, that was the plan. Just, just bum rush them every time. Yeah. Every time they just, they just rush at him, just find him, just throwing, throwing everything yeah. at him. There's no actually thought out process whatsoever. This is show up fight. Yeah. Uh, so and that's and that keeps going because in they do come up with kind of a plan at the end of issue two where they tease, okay, what we need now, which I don't know why they didn't think of this earlier, they're like, we need some anti-venoms. So the first one they're thinking about recruiting is silence. So the book does end with an Andy shot, you know, with her as silence in our our main universe, I guess. And, uh, and they're inferring that they're going to go rescue and recruit her. But at this point, they've gotten so many people killed that I start losing faith in Anne Weighing in this. Like, I actually, I start at this point, I was like, you know, I'll see one more issue what happens, but I don't trust her as a leader. And that sucks because this is a character that we never got a lot of stories of when she was alive. And so I thought the cool thing Donnie did about bringing her back and making her Agent Venom, I'm like, Good. That means on some world, maybe one day we'll get a cool story with her. And I don't feel like we get a cool story here. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on issue two before we move on to issue three? Uh, yeah, uh, there, you know, there's there's no. Well, they want to make you think there's communication, but there's obviously not. It's just <laughs> right. get away, get away, save yourselves. Then just pop back, try to catch him off guard, whatever. Right. And just just go after him, you know, Um I did hear hear a term that they were using in this comic hmm. for carnage. And it does make sense as you go on. They call it plot armor. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, you hit the nail on the head on that one. There's there's so much plot because he I get it. He's the threat, he's the bad guy, he's the whatever, but Man, is he like an OP Mary Sue in this book? Uh, yeah. Like, <laughs> like he just anything he wants accomplished, he gets done real easily. There's one part where he struggles. We'll get there with issue four. So I was like, okay, they did at least include one scene where you thought this could go another way, but it, it just doesn't last long. But we'll get there with issue four. But you're right though. It's, there's a lot of plot armor on him, uh, figuratively and literally, because he's as he's killing people, he's armoring up even more again. So. Um, so issue three, I have the digital code right there. So first person to put that code in, you can enjoy issue three. We get introduced right off the top to a venom man thing <laughs> and some venom bugs that are trying to, you know, carnage is attacking. So 
yeah, again, we're just learn we're just seeing random Venomized characters. Uh, and we did get that a little bit with the first Venomverse and Venomized, but I felt like the they picked like a core 10 to kind of get background a little bit of background on. You know, I think Cullen, Cullen did a better job of making you care a little bit about some of those Venoms and Venomized. Um, so that way when one of them died or sacrificed himself, you felt a little something for them. And I felt like it was the opposite in this one. Um, so what, I don't know. What are your thoughts on Venom Man thing and then the rest of issue three? Because I have only like three notes for this one also. Yeah, I don't have very, very many for this <laughs> one at, at all, honestly. Yeah. Um, it, it, go, it goes so fast. Yeah. You know, it's like you get Venom Man thing and then he's gone. He's dead. Yep. You know, it just, it, it it's, you know, it, there's no substance like, ah. Uh, no, zero. And they try to. Add, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, please. It, it, it just, it just, just, he just goes through and kills them so easily. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they, they don't last hardly no time whatsoever, which I mean, I understand they're wanting to get a bunch of venoms in there and show off all of these alternate reality versions and stuff. I, I get it. Right. You know, but pretty much, you know, you call it what it is cannon fodder, you know, so. <laughs> yeah just like they're just like hey we can just invent a bunch of new venoms real quickly to throw at carnage to make him look e like even more of a threat for whatever event book we're going to do next right. you know and and that's what this is and uh and they try like they try they do this thing that is so when i think of multiverse stories because obviously the marvel cinematic universe is doing multiverse stuff now and and dc kind of touched on that some with the flash movie and there's good ways to do multiverse stories and there's bad ways. And it's really easy to do the bad ways. And this is a prime example where we go right after Man, Venom Man thing. We meet Asgardia, who is like this female uh, warrior Valkyrie type uh, character who's Venomized with her horse or her Pegasus. And it's a cool image. It looks really awesome. And she turns out she's Brumhilda. She's like the daughter of, uh, or yeah, she's the daughter of Flash and, um, and the Valkyrie. Uh, on her earth, but then she meets a flash from a different universe and we're, and, and they just go, he goes, Oh my God, you're my daughter. And she's like, dad, you died on my world. Oh my God. And they hug and you're like, yeah, but we don't know either of these two. Like, what, like, so it's trying, so to try to haphazardly add some kind of heart to it in that regard, I'm like, but it doesn't work. Like you had this whole time, but because you wanted to keep it a secret poorly, you had this whole time, a mother and son story in this book and you could have, and you had five issues to flesh out an Anne weighing who was fighting alongside with her son. And you had five issues to add some heart and stakes to it. And they don't because they want to keep the mystery of virus a secret for three issues and then reveal who he is and then kill him instantly. And then she cries about it. And it's like, I'm like, dude, so you, you know how to try to write emotion on some level but you're you're not doing it because you're introducing alternate universe Eddies meeting alternate universe Ands and alternate universe Flashes meeting alternate universe Andes and all this and Valkyries and and there's we don't care and then and then you kill one or two of them off the next page anyway so what was the point of even doing it you know and yeah. that's what that's what issue three felt like to me it was a lot of like here's someone they're dead here's a trap no but Carnage set a trap well it's a reverse trap because now here comes the anti venoms and and then okay the issue's over now and I'm like. Oh my God. Like, <laughs> I don't know, man. This is where issue three was my breaking point where I finally was like, this book sucks on a lot of levels. Uh, I know one, one thing, um, there's a, there's a second an anti venom mm -hmm. there. And yeah, there's three, I think. Yeah. Um, he's more like our flash, except he's got like a Mohawk top deal. Um, which is pretty much the only difference to right. it I think. uh you really don't find out too much about that one at all and uh he, he's, he's done away with pretty pretty quick yeah he's uh, done with this anti-carnage is is uh is the one that holds the most ground in the fight but uh but he gets you know but he's a key part of the fourth issue um and then you have silence who's just kind of standing on the sidelines and watching everybody die <laughs> Um, well, you, you you can't have her die because she she's from the six <laughs> on six. So why put her in the so, story? <laughs> you know, she's just kind of just watching everybody. Like, hey, hey, sorry, yeah, I'm I, I'm important. <laughs> right, like Cullen Bunn's like, yeah, I got to put Andy in this. It's like, 
then then do something with her. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Well, what little, what little interaction there was, I mean, you know, it was kind of like a flash in the pan. Yeah, she like throws her hand out to claw him, and he op- Carnage opens a portal and makes her scratch herself. Yeah, and it's like yeah. that's the that's the big moment Andy gets. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, I, I understand they can't they can't kill her because she's part of the main Marvel universe. So true, yeah. but don't put her in the story then. Like, uh, right. like you, know, you know, especially a story where you're just you're just apparently killing people anyway. So it's like, so she's just there to live. <laughs> you know, she's the one one of the few that's gonna live. Um, I guess they, I guess maybe to, so that she can go back and warn people on her earth, but obviously Eddie Brock is time traveling and, and, and preventing robots from killing Hitler and meeting King the Conqueror. <laughs> so like, so I don't, I don't know how Eddie's going to get involved in, in this anytime soon. Um, so, so yeah, at the, at the end, yeah, yeah, I got some stuff we're going to talk about. Okay, good. Okay, good. Well, then let's breeze through issue four then, because in, at the end of issue three, anti-Carnage um, is absorbed into Carnage, and uh, and Carnage is now like, okay, now I have an anti-Venom or Carnage inside me, and I'm going to soon have their abilities too. But then this one fights back. Anti-Carnage actually fights back. And in issue four, we see the ramifications of that where he actually splits all of the victims that Carnage has absorbed, like Electro and you know all the different characters he's killed uh, throughout the series so far. Um, they're all split out of them now and they're fighting back uh, and, and carnage is actually vulnerable again to Sonics and fire and, and, Anne and then we're like, okay, this is our chance. Let's just bombard them and fight them more and, uh, and try to kill them. And I can't believe after all, all those other symbiotes and venoms just fighting one carnage that's vulnerable, <laughs> you know, they couldn't even hurt him. He doesn't even bleed. Like, I mean, I know he's a just liquid, but they, they it's, it's blew my mind how ineffective they were when they had the best chance to, uh, to stop him. Um, yeah. And so issue four was basically that just watching everybody fall on their face. Uh, yeah. It's like, it, it's like getting, getting, catching a long throw for a touchdown and you're running towards the end zone. You're going to hit the touchdown. No one's behind you and you trip and fall. Exactly. <laughs> and exactly. every, everybody kept doing it through the entire fourth issue. I mean, you know, here they, they had, it. they, they could have killed him right there. They, they kept yeah. attacking him, but why not go for the killing blow? Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Instead of just attacking him, yeah. go, go for the kill. Yeah. They're like <laughs> punching and kicking him. And I'm like, he's a liquid creature. What are you doing? <laughs> Oh I think God. one person cut cut his head off or something, but it just grew back. So I'm like, okay, I'll give you that. Like someone tried something, but but I mean, hit him with fire, hit him with Sonics, you know, rip him apart that, that way, um, transport him to another dimension away from the anti venoms that were pulling out of him. Like, you know, I know that that's what they were trying to do. Was Anne was saying, Dylan, go get the portals working again, and so we can send him out of here, you know, without his powers. And and then Dylan just didn't get it done in time. Which, by the way, if we haven't said it virus that's been hanging out with them this whole time in the armor is a little kid dylan <laughs> so if we didn't make that clear earlier um so yeah. that be- oh yes. my god this it makes my head hurt um <laughs> uh, exactly. because it, it, it is noted in the comic that that dylan inside of virus is actually her son yeah, her son, not an alternate universe Dylan that she found. It's That's her son. Her son. Yeah, yeah. This is this is the guy that we seen back in Venom number twenty seven as a king in black as Codex. Yeah, an adult man. <laughs> yeah, and he died, I think, or he disappeared, or whatever the story no, was. He uh, he was incapacitated. He was healing. Yeah. Okay. Something like that. Yeah. 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 So he was out of the picture. So I mean, yeah. may, maybe you could argue he when he finished his healing. He went reverted back to kid, uh, you know, uh, whatever Dylan without powers, <clears throat> but but again, the book doesn't tell us that, <laughs> so so I'm not going to guess it, you know. See, that's the problem I have with it is because again, I know I'm referencing this book, but it's a, it's a big continuity. Yeah, Ven- Venom Twenty Seven in the story, it shows the origin. It shows that he grew up. Before he become Codex, he was an adult man. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, he, that's right. He grew up with his parents he, in that he world. He had yeah. blonde, spiked hair. Yeah, he was Venom, except his spider emblem on his chest was red. The no one, yeah, white. Yep. You know, and but he was an adult man. 
Yeah. You know, before you become Codex. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's funny. Cause it's like, we're the ones who pay for these books and, 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 it's like, well, what about the people who get paid to make them? Why aren't they paying this close attention? Uh, you know, and I understand sometimes you got to make up, you got to go like, okay, you know what? It's not going to make sense, but we got to, this is the story we want to tell. But again, it's like, you could have done anything. You could have, you could have had it not be that same. And you could have had it. I don't know. There's, there's so many different routes you could have gone and you could have had a little bit more heart to it. Um, not that that every story needs that. Like I said, I was going to this expecting dumb popcorn fun, but I was blown away how, dumb it was without the fun like I, I you know and i again i'm not trying to insult the people who worked really hard on this but i i'm just that's my reaction that's like my genuine reaction reading this was just like no and and speaking of real quick before randy takes over again with issue four we wrap it up there's the code to issue four if i haven't given that out already first person put that code in you can read issue four for yourself and let us know what you think down below um, so yeah, issue four, cause it, and this book, it brings in the dreamstone <coughs> venom, uh, back from war of the realms, uh, cause on a different world war, of the realms kept going and dream venom, you know, as a, became a constant thing, he gets killed. And, and then that symbiote bonds with Eddie Spider-Man that we met in one of the previous miniseries. You got carnage reforming after all the symbiotes try to tear him apart and he comes back together and gets his full power back. And then he kills a venom silver surfer just before Null shows up. I mean, it, and it happens so fast Oh my like, God. because these books put these dumb, like, and sorry, cause I'm going to make the other videos on them, but these other backup stories, each issue from two to five have two backup stories in it. I'm like, why not take, why those? And why not put more pages to this exactly. story? <laughs> like you, ridiculous. The, the, the reason why yeah. is because of characters like Kid Venom. I, yeah, why. sure. But give him his own one shot or something to come out right when this book was coming out. Like put it all in one, put it in a one shot with the Michelini as the backup story, you know. And I don't know, and just call it like a Death of Venomverse annual or something, you know, and just whatever, just get it out there that way. But no one would buy it. That's probably why they didn't do it. I, I, this this is how how it was for me when I was yeah. reading this. I was like, I see it happen. I read it. I'm like, dude, he just killed a Silver Surfer. Are you <laughs> serious? Right. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh my God. And he killed him like it was nothing too. Like, yeah, like, really like, like Silver Surfer is like a member of the wrecking crew. Like I'm like, come on, <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. It's oh. uh, whatever. Oh my God. Yeah. But, um, um, yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay. So I have a really good question here. Okay. Okay, you know how he was absorbing all of the uh, all of all of the venoms, mm -hmm. and then how they split out of him, and they were anti carnage. Right. I need to know this. Somebody okay. needs to tell me this. How is he absorbing actual beings that are inside of these suits? So, as the way I understand it, in that scene, there was no. Um no living tissue in those suits when they fought back against them. They were just liquid like he is. Cause I think he only rips out the codex and the symbiote. Um, and I think he leaves the host behind. Not that the artwork shows that, but that's what that has happened in the previous carnage run. So I'm just assuming that's what's happening here. Um, so I, so I think if, but then I think someone gets their, one of the anti carnages gets their head chopped off, and I'm like, but why would that kill it? It's if it's just liquid like he is. Exactly. <laughs> that, I, I'm, just, I'm just like, you know, I, oh my god. Oh. Yeah, I would. Um, god, I, I, I would love to have. Oh. I would love to have Devin Lewis on this show. It's like, oh my god, I have years of questions for you, Devin. Um, oh my god. The so yeah okay yeah I don't have an answer to that so if anyone in the comments can let us know what you think uh, what that is because uh, I don't have an answer it's just oversight edit editorial oversight I guess or writing oh oversight God. you know I've talked with Devin many times yeah this is something I I, I need answers uh, yeah please Dylan uh, or Devin answer him uh, so he can tell know, us <laughs> so but Colin Bunn, if you have to watch this dude I love you but my God. Seriously, man. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it hurts because it hurts because I am a genuine fan of that guy, and I've met him a few times. And I've back before when I had Twitter, not this time, but before when I had Twitter. Anytime I wrote something, he would like it. He's very it, reactive 
to people online. Uh, the Venom site I know and Bizarnage will tag him sometimes, and he comments back like he. These are all awesome people. Sandoval, same thing. Like these guys love what they do, and it's yeah. And I and I hate being negative on stuff, even with Donnie. Like I know I was very critical with Donnie's run, but I'm just going off of the work and not the person. And, uh, and that's the same thing here, but it hurts when I like the person, you know, it's like, Oh God, I really like Cullen Bunn. And I think he is a great guy. And I think he's a great writer. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I've heard nothing but nice things about Dev and never had an interaction with him, but I've heard nothing but nice things. And, uh, and, and so David, it's, it's a bummer. It's a bummer. David is great. He, nice. there was one year he sent me a, a venom care package that's awesome it was yeah. absolutely it was it was unre- dude it was ratios it was exclusives that's cool. oh my god dude i mean seriously he, he he's awesome seriously yeah you know, but i that'd be that would be awesome if we could get him on your show seriously yeah and I, i'd have you on since you know like know him more way more than i do like the three of us could just talk and i would even send him the questions beforehand so that he knew what we would discuss. And I, and I'm not here to like, you know, pry too much. And I know there's like some things they can't say because of, you know, contracts and other things, but uh, possibly, but I would just love to pick his brain a little bit and just have a fun nerd conversation with him because, but I do though, in my head though, I'm forever going to have years and years of questions <laughs> about the yes. Donny the Donny Cates run and stuff like this, where I'm just like, what was the logic? What was the, you know, and, uh, but I know at, at the end of the day, everyone tries their best. Uh, I believe that. Um, some people will disagree with me on that. But I feel nobody sits down and says, I'm going to write the worst thing ever. And I'm going to draw right. the worst right. thing ever. I don't. I honestly don't believe anyone does that. Um, because there's no point in doing that. I think everyone does try their best with the tools they have at the time as they're doing stuff. And I know people also have personal things that happen in their regular life. And that will sometimes affect the quality of their work. So you never know. And that's why it's hard to be negative, even for me. Like, it's like, I like being constructive if if I feel the need to. But again, I'm just giving my opinion on that. But I hate being negative. And I feel like I very much am because as we're going into issue five here, uh, with the last issue, Null arriving and, you know, the world, this alternate world we're on that they never really established. If you notice in this book, they never put little, so they, in the first issue they did, this is Agent Venom uh, or yeah of Earth 1050 and, and Agent Spider-Man of 1050. But after that, they don't really get into any of that. They don't establish where they are in the multiverse uh, very well. And then when you get to this world, it looks like a world where everything happened exactly the way it did before, but yet somehow this Null didn't know about a Carnage. And so so when Carnage shows up, you know, Null's <clears throat> kind of like, what is this thing? And you would have been a good, obedient lapdog. Dog, and, and, and Carnage's like, well, in my world, I was your lapdog. So I'm like, okay. So, But then you have Captain America and the Avengers all lining up to fight him. And, uh, and that's where this issue starts off. And so, boom, there's the digital code, the final one for issue five. If you guys want to check that out, um, first person to put that code in gets it. So tell me, man, we're on the last issue now. Tell me what your thoughts are on issue five. Okay, so first, and you, you, can, you can check it out. You can go back and read. During Kate's run, it was said, and I believe it was Noel that said it, that... Uh, that null, the, the 616 null, was the only null. Right. He, he did say that. He absolutely said that. So, like, okay, so what are we doing with this other null? <laughs> right. You because in, in, in Dylan's world or Anne's world, she there was Codex. And, it, mm-hmm. you know, and so, so there was no real null in that world either. So, yeah, they established very clearly that this null could just see into the multiverse and there was one null. I mean, yeah, he, I guess he could have been wrong, but... That's what was established. And since this one didn't go out of their way to establish and explain why that wasn't the truth, that makes it frustrating to read. Because then you're just like, who's null is this? Yeah. Yeah. So what I was thinking is that my my original thought process, because they, they released the image of the cover like way early and of, of issue five. So I was thinking, okay, they he had to go back in time to fight Noel, not to another universe, not to a, a, a different Noel. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So that's what I was thinking. I was thinking he was going to fight the real Noel, but go back in time to do it. Right. That's what I thought. Right. So when we're doing this, I'm all confused. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because they could have, they could have been like, all right, we're going to introduce the time tra- travel element at the end here because now what we're going to set up is a carnage 
who's going through time to try to find his Eddie Brock in his world. And then you could, and you could play with the, the, the time Kang stuff and all that uh, over in the main book. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm with you. I was like, where, wait, what? Okay. So there's two nulls and this one gets his ass beat. <laughs> like, Dude. He, 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 I'm oh. like, so this carnage doesn't even have the powers of null and he tosses null around like a rag doll. I mean, there's a point where they get split up and the heroes think they're teaming up with carnage and carnage starts killing captain America's and black widows and stuff. And then you have Thor getting killed by null and then they go back to fighting. But again, everyone's just thrown in to be brief cannon fodder. And once again, you get in Wayne and go, all right, we have a plan and it's a hell Mary. And it's the third, like the second or third time where they use the term hell Mary. And the, it's the same hell Mary every time, <laughs> right when they're fighting null, another portal opens. And now all the venoms, from the mini series that came out, the priest venom, the, the Tarzan girl venom, you know, like all of them just come running out dinosaur venom. They're all just come running out to join the fight. And then they all get killed. Most of them get killed one by, you know, one by one. And they're just like, that was the hell Mary was just more venoms. Like, I, I, it's just like, why not more gnolls? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're going to, if you're going to give us this knoll, yeah. there be other gnolls as yeah. well? Go get more gnolls and silver surfers and galactuses. What are you doing <laughs> getting more venoms? Like, it's so uh, stupid. <laughs> uh, i tell you what they should have done. They should have went and got, they should have went and got Thanos is what they should have done. Yeah. You could just show up with the infinity gauntlet and be like, all right, dude, here's a world. You can just, you can just snap these guys away. You exactly. Know? Yeah. Um, that, that that would have been better. <laughs> anything. I mean, and I know that would have been convenient to wrap everything up. And I know in the end they wanted Carnage to win, but it's like at the cost of making Anne Wang the stupidest human being and the worst strategist out of anyone I think I've ever read in a comic book. Like it's so bad. Like how how like I I we always talked about her on the show, like how she got the short end of the stick. Mary Brock got the short end of the stick. And these are characters that just kind of got dismissed in a lot of ways and almost refrigerated on some levels. And I'm just like, this is your chance to have, like when they were building this up and she's recruiting Venoms, I'm like, okay, we're finally going to get an Anne Wang who kicks ass, who is going to lead. She's going to be a, a leader. And you know, I don't want her to be perfect. I don't want her to do everything right. I want her to make some mistakes, but she is so dumb in this book. She gets her own son killed. And she gets a bunch of other innocent, uh, you know, Venom characters killed. And she essentially just k helps feed Carnage to get more powerful so that he can go and, and rule the universe now. And I'm like, so I imagine at some point she'll come back and she'll get a redemption point. But in, at least in this, as a standalone story, she is dumb as rocks. And she gets so many people killed to the point where she, there's not a single heroic thing about her. And that bummed me out as someone who's been waiting for a positive and weighing story all these years. Oh, dude, I know. I, I, I absolutely love her. Um, I think she's great as Agent Venom. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really happy that we actually have an Anne Wang in comics. Yeah. You know, because she was dead for a long time. Too long. You know, so, I mean, and for this to, to, to come out as it did, you know, it, it, it sucks, you know. I mean, it, it just sucks. It does. And 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 to wrap my thoughts up, I mean, the book ends with Carnage. You know, spoilers, obviously, we've talked about the whole episode. But Carnage wins. Dylan, her actual son, Dylan, in the virus suit, dies. She, before he does, she takes his suit and teleports everyone who was dying or injured and sends them back to their universe. Because Anne's thought is, I'm not going to get any more people killed now that my son's dead. So that was one kind of heroic thing she does. Um, but she's like, go home and spend your last moments with the people you love because obviously this carnage now we can't beat him. So he's just going to hunt us all down one by one and kill us. Uh, but really I don't think carnage wants that anymore. I think he got the powers he wants and he found yeah. another universe. He found another universe where there was a null. So he killed that null and got God King of black powers. So now he's on the level of Eddie Brock, apparently, even though Eddie Brock is not nearly as powerful as they write carnage in this book. So uh, so that battle, so I'm like, great. So you have two God characters fighting and it's carnage and venom. I go, this is the least interesting setup for possibly the worst venom carnage fight ever coming up, which is going to be a God carnage and a God venom fighting. I couldn't be less interested because I hate when characters are just given more powers to make them cooler. It's lazy writing I feel. And it's, it's a, and it's a concept Marvel consistently does 
And they also do the kid thing way too much. We got Kid Venom, which is funny because I thought Dylan was already Kid Venom. And you have Kid Carnage, which is Red Goblin. You have Kid Toxin, which is Bren. Um, and now we have Kid Venom, like an alternate universe, and Spider Boy. And I'm just like, this idea that you guys have beat it in the horse didn't even learn how to run yet, and you beat it to death. So, yeah. like, so, and that's what they're doing with the <clears throat> OP characters. So, I don't know. So, my thoughts on this book was that um, I hate it. <laughs> and uh, and I, it's, a, it's a shame that such talented people gave me a book that really is like almost the final nail in the coffin. After I finished Venom 25 and, and some of the other uh, Red Goblin issues and Misery, um, I'm 100% this time. I don't, I'm not going to let people pull me back in. I'm done reading monthly Venom comics and Symbiote comics. Uh, I, I don't care about Black Widow getting a costume. I don't care about where Carnage goes from here. If everyone's going to be a time-traveling god, I'm, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait this out, and I'll, I'll come back monthly at another time. But this is my jumping-off point. That's how much uh, this book uh, I didn't like. So if you got questions, if you got final thoughts, man, I got to hear them because I'm being so negative right now. Okay. So first of all, like I had said earlier, how the hell did he kill Silver Surfer? There's, there's number one. Um, okay. And, and, and here's this. How the hell... Is Carnage so invulnerable? Like, I, I mean, seriously, how did he, how did he kill Noel by just stabbing him through the back when Venom had to take Noel and drop him into the damn sun? You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, yeah. like, how, like how the how the hell? Uh, because I, I got this. Uh, Eddie is nowhere near that. He is not in, invulnerable. He is no. not. No. Um, Let's see. Uh, let's see what else I got here. So, um, like talking talking about Dylan being mm -hmm. dead. If that if that is that that Dylan, dude, that they could have done something with that character because they had him like they they. I think they were saving him for something. Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying, and and and, and just, to just kill him like this, that that oh man, I think that was a big big mistake. Um, okay, so mm -hmm. now what I'm going to be talking about here is for the future. Okay, okay. so it's for the future. I got it. Well, so uh, real quick, what would you rate Death of Carnage overall? Just the main story, uh, one out of five, or one to five. Oh. Sorry. Uh. Per issue or just the whole series? The whole thing as a, as a whole. Because I know I know we thought it started off semi-strong. And we were like, okay, I'm intrigued. And I know it got worse as it, it went on for yes. the most part. So, so I know that's our thoughts there. But just as for a clean rating, what, what would you say between one and five? Two. A hundred percent two. I was going to say two also. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a two. And I think that's just because I like the artwork. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> most of the time. So, yeah. I mean... So, so hit us with the, what's what's possibly coming down the pipeline for these symbiotes. Okay, so have you um, have you read Venom twenty four and twenty five? I have actually. I recorded a video on it already, so I'll have that up soon. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, well, one thing is mm -hmm. is when Carnage goes to fight. Uh, Venom. I don't hmm. think it's going to be what everybody thinks it's going to be. Okay, yeah. number one. Number one. There's no way in hell that uh, um, Meridius is going to let Carnage do just whatever he wants. There's no way in hell. You know. I mean, unless Meridius, his the secret he's holding is that he absorbed Car that God Carnage, and that's why he's so powerful. Hey, that they're at. Oh wow, that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right though otherwise he won't stand for it and he'll probably just you know get rid yeah, of him to so. get rid of him to prove how strong he is you know but yeah so Ed, eddie has bedlam mm -hmm. and then there's meridius and then there is the whatever the seventh venom is yeah there's there's that um i've got a feeling that they're you know since since carnage is so op all these different versions of Venom and Eddie are probably going to combine, yeah, or, or something like yeah. that. Your form Voltron, Venomtron, <laughs> Venomtron, Venomtron. 
<laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, ta, 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 ta. Um, and honestly, I think that since they brought in a different universe null in this series, I think a another null may show up. Yeah, um, probably. Yeah, you know, there's there is that. Um, okay, Venom Lethal Protector Volume Three, and Venom Twenty Four and Twenty Five. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Doom. And yeah. Flex, and Flexo. Yeah. Okay, I think they're both going to have something to do with this. I, I, I've re- I've read some things, heard some things about Doctor Doom being involved. For sure. Uh, Doctor Doom, Flexo, and Kang. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got that. Let's see. Um, and the fl- I gotta say the Flexo thing is is neat. Actually, that's one of the things in the main story I've been liking. And anytime Doom's around, I like it. Uh, but uh, issue twenty five is cool, and I'll I'll get in my my the- my my theories yeah. in that video. But uh, since I already recorded them, I won't spoil them here. But yeah, I like hearing this. So you're right. I think all those guys are going to be big parts of this. Yes. Um, and also, this is. I'm going to throw what, what they call it cornbread. Uh, um, cornbread. Okay. So, <laughs> Flexo. Yeah. Flexo is actually the first ever symbiote on Earth. Well, are you not including the uh, the Grendel? Uh, well, um, Flexo was was created in 1940. Right, but the Grendel came during like uh, ancient Norse you know, uh, early days, Thor as a teenager, um, in Norse mythology and, right, uh, right, 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 right. Right. So, and he was here and that's where the four symbiotes that Rex knew in Vietnam came from. Right. So, uh, so he would have been here before 1940. So, um, yeah, but I, that doesn't, but that still raises the question where the hell did Flexo come from? You know, exactly. Um, so, um, well, you said that you you've recorded videos for twenty four and twenty five, right? Yeah. So if so, you have thoughts on it, I want to hear your thoughts. I'll save mine are already recorded in that video. Uh, well, some of the things I think is really cool that I you know that may kind of foreshadow in a way. Okay. Um, is where where Eddie gets to meet a very young Peter Parker. A very oh, yeah. very young Peter Parker. Yeah. This, well, this yeah. this before Peter Parker even you know got the symbiote. He was he was still a teenager. Right. Yeah. You know. So there's that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then you know, for everybody, if you've read it or you haven't read it, check it out. You'll see what I'm what I'm getting at there. But what I'm saying is, like right now, in the Amazing Spider-Man storyline. Mm-hmm. Peter is evil right now. Yes. Yeah, he's got the sins of Norman Osborn in him. So I'm thinking since they've brought, they had Eddie meet Peter when he was like innocent, Mm -hmm. is Peter now, the evil Peter, is he going to be involved with this in some way as well? Well, and and, in the past, typically when, Venom's up against a big threat. You know, he's had Spider-Man by his side, but I think over the last year, especially with Donnie's run onward, I think the whole point, and, and especially the movie success, the first movie success is Venom doesn't always need Spider-Man. Um, so I'd be curious to see, like, I still like having Spider-Man around, um, but uh, with, with Venom stories. So I would like to see that something like that happen, but I, that, that all comes down to whether they, what they see as the Venom as the brand, I would guess. So the way I'm looking at this is it would be totally different. It would be completely opposite as all, right. all the other times in the past because where Peter is evil. Right. I got you. Yeah. I see. I see what you're doing. I got you. Yeah. I mean, that, that could be, I mean, they're doing so many strange shit with Spider-Man. Uh, I can't, I, it's hard to keep up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I only read that issue because um, with the sin thing is because someone mentioned it to me and I said, well, I really liked the Nick Spencer story where they took the sins out of Norman and so I, I kind of want to see how they end up in Peter. So I did read that one issue, but that's, I haven't read like 10 issues before it. So I have no idea what else is going on in that book. Okay. And then also, mm-hmm. uh, something's going to have to happen between Carnage and Cletus. Definitely there's going to be a confrontation there because there's still a Cletus. 
even though he was um, mostly wiped out in that uh, that Carnage Reign storyline, enough of them survived at the end. So there's still he's still out there. Whatever was inside Deadpool, that Carnage that was growing is still somewhere out there in the world. I think I don't know if that was destroyed. And then the God one is out there. So you're right. That could be the Achilles heel uh, to destroying God Carnage is um you know rebonding him to the flesh of uh, Cletus Cassidy. Okay, and then I was going to bring this up. Mm-hmm. Since Cletus and Carnage are separated, you know, are they not complete? Yeah, it's it's. I have no idea what's going on with Carnage. That was the one question I never understood in the main book. Was okay. There's. I understand there's two Carnages, but I don't understand like what each one are made of. One's fleshy, and the other one's just a symbiote with DNA memories, I guess. And then, but that one thrived to become a god now that it was independent of Cletus, but it was independent of Cletus before, like when it was on Venom Island. So I don't, I don't know. I, like I said, I, I feel like I, I'm just going to end up in the hospital trying to think about all this shit. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 Cause I do get like that. Sometimes I go, look, if the people who are paid to care about this don't care, then why am I losing sleep over it? You know, like, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, that's just how I feel in general about stuff because money's limited for me right now uh, with, with a lot of stuff going on in personal life. So for me, I'm like, if something isn't good, I don't stick around anymore. I kind of just go, yeah. I'm, I'm out. Um, but I, I want to like this stuff because uh, obviously I like doing the show and I like um, talking about these characters and we've been doing it for the past almost six years now. And one month it'll be six years. We've been doing Venom vlog. And, uh, and we're almost what 850 episodes getting there, like climbing to 850. So, I mean, it's been, um, it's fun talking about this stuff, but when it's bad, I hate, I hate being so negative. I just hate being negative. And, and the future sounds interesting. Like there's cool aspects, but like when they go, Oh, we're doing a carnage book again, and we're going to have black widow run around with a symbiote. I'm just like, I don't care about any of that. I'm like, I just, I just want you to wrap up this Eddie Brock story. If it takes you another 20 episodes, issues, that's fine. Take your time with it, but wrap this up. And then I don't know, you've gone in this direction already with gods and all this stuff with venom, like, you know, f- figure out, a, you don't have to go back exactly to the status quo. I don't like him going back into his original hamster wheel. I like that. He constantly jumps out of his hamster wheel. That's the one thing we always talk about on the show. So I don't want it to be the same. I just want, I just want the craziness to to calm down. Like everyone's just like, how powerful can we make these characters? And I'm like, but that's not interesting. <laughs> like, I don't care how powerful you can make them. Um, I like when they're the underdogs. And wow. if you want to tell one story where Eddie's not the underdog, that's a great story to tell. But, um, but it's like, but Eddie is kind of this, you know, that's the one hamster wheel element to him is that he is an underdog. And he's a guy that people don't give enough credit to and he and they don't um see how hard he tries to do the right thing and these are all elements we like about eddie because they're relatable but when he's a time traveling god it's like well what's there to relate to <laughs> like who gives yeah. it yeah. yeah you know so um, yeah good I, I don't I, at first for a while there um me and eddie's mullet we both agreed that they were most likely going to return Eddie back back to like street level. You know, we were, you know, but it's looking like that's not going to happen because I think that he will defeat Carnage. Yeah. Um, and also Dylan is Venom. Yeah. So, and Eddie now has Bedlam as his symbiote. Right. So there's that. I've got a feeling that um eddie will probably most likely remain king King and black most likely and that's fine i'd never once they did that i was like that's not my issue my issue with the book isn't that that he's just a god it's just that they're now that he's a god they're like okay we got to take it to the next level and it's like no you don't we haven't even seen him at this level at all we have like you know so so i want to see him as the king in black figuring it out and i don't mind I don't mind that Dylan's Venom. I mean, Venom, there's been uh, Matt Gargan Venom. There's been, you know, there's been, a, uh, what's like the guy no one likes? <laughs> uh, what's Lee P- Price or whatever? Lee, Lee um, Price. Yeah, yeah, so like there's been other people as Venoms. I'm not upset that Dylan is Venom. Actually, he's some of the consistently 
well-written stuff in the main monthly book that I like because he's a street level venom running around, you know, trying to stop his dad from, you know, you know, getting lost in time and becoming Meridius. So there's a, there's a cool element to Dylan. I like it. I just, uh, I just, like you said, I want to see him be King in black, right? He was King in black for a day where he was controlling symbiotes. I'm like, that's cool. That's a new role to see Eddie in. And I want to see more of that. And then they were like, no, we got to get to the next big story and start building this time travel nonsense. And I'm like, see, that's where you lose. That's where you losing me, man. Like I, I'm all for a new status quo for the character, but let him be in it for a while before you jump to the next thing, you know? <laughs> Like he hasn't even got to show off his true powers at all, not even once yet, or even figure out how some of the basic powers of a king in black works. Exactly. You know, like, like uh, he's just okay. He controlled a couple symbiotes on that one mission. Okay, that's great, but that's all we got. And so, and then and then he got wrapped up in all this other stuff. So, yeah, to me, it's cool that you want to change things. Like, change is not. I don't think change is negative. Uh, and and Venom and Eddie are those characters that we always say on the show. He's he, unlike other superheroes, like Spider-Man right now has clearly been brought back to his status quo again. He's not with Mary Jane and they're, they're undoing everything Nick Spencer built up, all that goodwill he earned. And it's like they're they're to tell another story. And it's like you got they got to stop resetting these characters. And that's what I liked about Eddie was that he wasn't reset. And I'm like, that's great. He's not reset. That's fine. Uh, but what are you going to do with him now? Um, one of the cool things Marvel's doing right now, which I like, is um, Daredevil. Uh, Daredevil is now a priest in the comics. That's his all. He's not a lawyer anymore. He's he became a priest, a Catholic priest. I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> I'm like, that's uh, that's so fitting for Matt Murdock uh, as a guy who struggles, you know, to do the right thing also and and make the right decisions. And uh, but and but as someone who's a glutton for punishment and gets beaten up a lot, um, I think it's a good role for him. And and they're really embracing it. And so I'm. I'm on board for that. And then also Hulk ever since the, you know, the Hulk uh, story where he's going into hell and all the, you know, he's more of a monster They're uh, They're doing more with that in the current Hulk book where he's meeting other monsters and stuff. So I'm like, they Marvel has some good ideas and some good writers doing good stuff with their characters. Venom had a, a great start with, okay, he's King and black and Dylan's the earth venom, <coughs> but they just, I don't know. They, I think they're just, they're not messing it up because I'm still intrigued in the story, but it's just like I would have liked to see more King and Black, Eddie. That that's what I'm wanting to see when this ends. Yeah. You know, after he defeats Carnage. Yeah. We need to have I don't know if they're just gonna call it King and Black, or they're gonna call it Bedlam, whatever. We need a book for him yeah. where he where he is just doing his thing. Yeah. Two two monthly books. Eddie Brock, the King in Black, is one book. Eddie Brock colon the King in Black, and Dylan Brock colon Venom, or Lethal yeah. Pro Lethal Protector, whatever you want to call him. Like, yeah, but yeah, make those two the monthly books, and just have that. Like, and that's you know, it. That's it. That's it. Yeah, make make Red Goblin a recurring character in the Venom book, and get rid of his book, even though it's a good book. But just you know, they're they're they're, they're that's the one thing Marvel's doing with this that I don't like, which is they go, okay, this what this went, di you know, um. This went big. Like Venom became a rock star for a while. His book was outselling every other Marvel book. So now we got to do like 10 Venom books. <laughs> it's like, no, don't do that. Just, right. just keep it simple. Uh, everybody doesn't need a symbiote. That's not what makes these characters interesting is diluting them is not interesting. You know, uh, given everyone under the sun, a symbiote is not interesting. That's why Black Widow, I'm like, they're like, oh, they could tell so many cool stories with her with a symbiote. I'm like, don't care. <laughs> I just I don't care. I don't want to see another person. Liz Allen has a symbiote, and then like the guy she's fighting in the book has all of the Life Foundation symbiotes, and it's just like these things get passed around like pairs of shoes, and uh, and they're worn out by now. Like you, you need new shoes. What I would like to see, yeah, is Eddie with his book dealing with his book. Yeah, I would like to see something done with Flash. Mm -hmm. Um, it'll I'll be in the Carnage to... book, by the way. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm I'm looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I I, I want to see um Sleeper. I want to see Toxin. Mm -hmm. Do you, do something with them. They don't have to have their own books. Yeah, but recurring you know, throw, characters. Throw yeah. them in here and there. You know, I mean, do something with these guys. These, these characters have been around for a long ass time. I mean, do something with them. You know. 
Yeah, well, they did with uh, Venom 23, because uh, my video on that's going to go up soon, where uh, that's where they introduce Black Widow with the symbiote that yeah. she gets. But that's yeah. the one where Bren, Toxin, the new Toxin, his dad gets ki kidnapped and is bleeding out, and he needs Venom's help to save his dad. And I'm like, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Every every once in a while, I'll get, you know, do a solo story where, you know, to break up the the the, you know, the trade paperback stories. Yeah, um, Toxin is actually my wife's favorite Marvel character. Oh, cool. And so she was just elated that he was in the book, you know. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was happy to see him too. Uh, but we need we need we need to see some sleeper. We need to see some more agent anti venom. You know, I mean, don't create new ones. Use the ones you got. Well, it's like Spider Man has that problem where they go now they have Spider Boy and all these other things, but when they have Miles and Spider Gwen and they keep bringing in the multiverse characters, it's like yeah, but you're not doing anything with Kane. And then until oh you brought God. him in, until you brought him back, which you told me about in the last episode. Yeah. And then, uh, which by the way, I finally got that issue, which was hard to track down because it was also yeah. the first appearance of spider boy. So yeah. everyone was, everyone was buying because of spider boy. And I'm like, I just want it because of Kane. I don't care about spider. Exactly. Yeah. That, that, um, that, that's, that's me. I that was you. I just wanted to get the book because yeah. I knew that Kane returned in that book. That's right. That, that's, that's all I wanted. Yeah, I just I, wanted I it for my collection. I do not give a shit about Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just don't. And who knows? It could be a cool character or whatever. But I'm just at the point now where I'm like, like you said, it's like you have these great characters you've already established. I, I'm not saying it's it's evil or wrong to bring in new characters, but just don't forget the other ones. So it's like, okay, you want to do a Spider-Boy book? Put Kane in it with him. You know, like have him be a recurring character. Have him be like, you know, show up every once in a while to keep an eye on the kid or whatever. It's like, have, just do something, you know, like I always said, I go, I would love a Savage Avengers book that actually took place in the Savage Land. And you have, uh, you have Kazar and his team, but you throw like Hulk and Kane on there. And it's like, there you go. You got Kane as a Savage Avenger in the Savage Land, like a uh, perfect place for someone like him running around yeah. killing dinosaurs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. There's you can do cool things with these characters in other books and find a spot for them in the universe. And I'm not saying every character has to have that happen to them because I get it. There's so many Marvel characters and everyone's someone's favorite. But when you're doing Spider-Man and you're just introducing five or ten new Spider-Man characters on you know every time a trade paperback comes out, just don't lose track of the of the ones that people do like. Yeah, yeah. This is my only thing. So yeah. um well, any last final thoughts on on Venom, on where you hope the series goes, where you hope these characters go, and uh, and what might be our next episode together? I, I would love if, if it's me, you, and uh, Devin talking at some point. That would be amazing. But I don't. I would not uh, feel bad if he rejected that because you know I know I don't know if he's ever seen my show before. But if 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 my criticisms like hurt anyone's feelings, that, that wasn't my intention. Intention, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I, I would understand if someone was like, dude, I want to come on and talk to you. You're kind of a D bag. I'd be like, oh, yeah, I guess from your, <laughs> from your point of view, I guess I am a big D bag. So, um, but yeah, so yeah, tell me, what, what would you like to see? Um, well, well, I mean, I've pretty much talked about Venom and everything, like what I think is going to happen and what I, what I hope happens. Mm -hmm. Um, there's something that I hope happens. They have the perfect opportunity for it right now where we've got an evil Spider-Man. Why not have uh, Chasm come out and fight the evil Spider-Man? That's true. That could, could give your redemption arc to Ben in some way. Yeah. Um, ben really needs one. That whole Chasm thing. The costume looks cool, but I hate the shit out of that character. Love uh, the costume, yeah. Love yeah. the costume. But, yeah, costume's yeah. cool. Yeah. But I would love to see that. You know, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. I, I think that would be great, you know. Oh, and also, mm -hmm. um, Anti-Venom is... Uh, Savage Avenger. Yeah, I know he's he's time traveling with them. I mean, yeah. the book the book ended, but yeah, he in that I'm gonna Dude. cover it. I'm gonna cover that as one long episode. If you want to do that with me, if you've read them, yes. yes. Okay. Oh, let's do it. Let's plan that for our next one then. I absolutely love that series, dude. Okay, it, it's awesome. It's yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, well, good because I I have both trade paperbacks, and uh, so I'll touch up and read them again, and maybe like in a like before Thanksgiving, let's come back and do one of these. And uh, and we'll talk about that ten issue or eleven issue run of that book. Okay, cool. I got one. I got one more thing. Hit me. One more thing. A, a little bit of cornbread. I love uh, it. Venom number twenty five. Yeah. yeah. There, there's a little bit of an origin story in there of a symbiote. I think it went over everybody's head. 
You know what? Might have went over my head too because I don't think I know what you're talking about. Rascal. Oh, the little, the little piece of bedlam. Yeah, that's rascal, dude. You think so? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Kang thought... even called Kang even called him rascal. He sure did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he said, "Oh, look at this little rascal. I wonder where he'll end up." Yeah, that's right. Oh, interesting. Yep. I, you're right. I totally went right over my head. But now that you're saying that, I'm like, no, I re I remember that conversation. Cool. So okay. I just wanted to throw that out there. Venom yeah. number 25, guys. You know, <laughs> yeah, pick it up. It, partial origin of Rascal, guys. I handsome. <laughs> um, it's a, it was a good issue, by the way. I actually overall like that issue. Um, and uh, and I like the artwork in it. And, and uh, the Doom stuff is intriguing. I mean, but that's my favorite villain of all time. Dr. Doom yeah. is my all-time favorite comic book villain. Um, so for me, like, you know, him, you know, showing up in that Michelini run, I was like, okay, they're clearly doing this to set up Oh yeah. Current day stories. And then that turned out to be the case. And I was like, okay, good. So um, I'm curious to see where we go from here with, with doom and, and his relationship to symbiotes. Cause he's now in through time travel has activated flexo to attack, you know, to go through Dylan and use Dylan as a weapon to help destroy Eddie Brock in the future. So yeah, yeah I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, to that, you know, to that story and everything. So hey, man. You know, I think, I think it'll be great. Yeah. And, and with the Venom stuff, like as far as covering it on the show for me, um, maybe what I'll do is um, after like 10 or 12 or, you know, some 15 issues come out, maybe I could have you and, and Eddie's mullet on and we can discuss them like, like this, you know, and, uh, and this will be my way of like covering my thoughts on those issues until the end of Al Ewing's run. But, um, but again, I won't do it until like, you know, 10 or 12 issues come out. Uh, I don't, I can't do it monthly. There's so much, uh, comics coming out and I actually sold my comic collection most of it uh, recently to help pay for bills and stuff and uh, and so all I really have left is Ghost Rider and Moon Knight and Ghost Rider most of that collection was underwater if you guys don't follow me on Instagram um, it was underwater uh, a couple weeks ago luckily only about maybe 20 or so issues I'll have to rebuy because I was in the process of rebagging and boarding all of them and I was on the last box um, but luckily it wasn't the last issues of the run, which are the most hardest to find. Uh, they were issues around 50 that got damaged. So I can find copies of those pretty cheap. So um, uh, I didn't lose much. So thank God for that. But yeah, there was a flood in my apartment. So I've cut down a lot on stuff and, uh, and I'm and venom is, is next. It's it's, I purged my venom collection. This is all that's left behind me is on this wall. And, um, and I will just cover movie news moving forward, but I'd love to have you back on and Eddie too at from time to time to talk the comic stuff. So let's do it again next month. Let's talk about Savage Avengers. Talk about Flash. Definitely, definitely. definitely. Awesome. Oh, yeah. brother. Well, hey, uh, Randy, as always, like add Venom ba uh, Balor, everyone. Venom Unleashed, you'll see him in the comments. Amazing, amazing dude. He's so awesome and he's so nice to reach out to me, check on me, ask how I'm doing, ask how Ace is doing every time. And you're an awesome dude and you're invited on the show. You don't even, you're, instant invitation you ever want to do something with me you just write me and, and tell me and we'll make it happen all, all right, right man. that's awesome it sounds good awesome sounds and right everyone good. everyone out there follow him i'll put a link to his twitter down below if you want to check that out and uh and dude we got to get you making videos at some point man you go we got to get you doing something because uh i love your knowledge of the stuff i love your passion for these characters and i'm waiting for that fire to light under you to you know to make some some videos of your own at some point i, I definitely thought about it yeah, you know, it's the, the thought. The thought is there, you know, so uh, it, it it may happen. <laughs> All right. Well, if it does, let me know because I, you know, I'll, I would love to be a guest every now and again and talk to you and pick your brain. Oh over yeah, there man. Too. I, you'd probably be my first guest, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sweet, that'd be awesome. Well, um, Randy, you have a good night, sir, and everyone watching. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, for, if you got the digital codes, let me know what your reviews of those books are down below. And if you've read this yourself already. Let us know. And if, if you have answers to Randy's questions or anything we brought up here, leave them down below. That way we can keep talking down there. We can keep discussing this book because it's it's a little divisive. I saw some people on Instagram and Twitter that did like this book. Um, and they, and I was like, hey, that's great. I, you know, everything, everything is subjective. But it was cool to see that there were people who were fans of it. But I also saw people that were let down in the, in the same sense we were. So whether you agree with us or not, let us know down below. And Cullen and Sandoval and 
everyone who worked on this book, Devin and everything, like, again, no hard feelings. We're just giving our opinions. We mean no disrespect. And everything just comes from a place of passion from us and love for these characters. But it, you know, doesn't, hopefully it doesn't dissuade you from, you know, you know, continue to do what you do and, and keep killing it on your level. So, so yeah, please, please keep, 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 keep making comics and stuff, please. Um, any last words, dude? Uh, I, 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 I guess that's, that's about it. It's all she wrote. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. We'll see you on the future. Peace.